What's going on YouTube? So the Audi Q7 has long been one of people's first choices when it comes to a luxury three-row SUV. Setting at the top of Audi's lineup when it comes to size, the Q7 offers quite a bit of utility all wrapped up in a stylish package. For 2023, Audi has continued to make updates to the Q7, including some new standard features inside and out. So is the Audi Q7 still one of the top choices in the luxury three-row segment? Let's go ahead and find out. Now, like I mentioned in the introduction, the Q7 has always been a pretty stylish offering inside of this segment, and that does continue for 2023 since we're not going to see any significant design changes. So let's start off, of course, by taking a look at our grill. This is your signature Audi shape. As you can see, it's large, quite bold. Um, and on this model, we do have the silver rings, although you can black those out if you want a full black option when you choose the black optic package. Now, as you can tell, we do have that, that blacks out all the trim around the grill, as well as a lot of other elements you'll see throughout the rest of the exterior, giving it a very, very stealthy look when you pair it with a full black exterior color as well. Now let's talk about the headlights. So this is actually one of the areas where we see a 2023 change, and that's that you have expanded availability of matrix LED headlights this year. Now, ironically, these are not the Matrix LED headlights because of the chip shortage. So even though we have expanded availability, Audi is giving us a credit and still giving us the basic headlights. So I can't really show you what those look like, but you've probably seen them on some of our past Q7 reviews. Now continuing our exterior tour, let's check out the wheel options. So you do have an abundance of options, starting at 19 inches, going to 20, 21, and 22 options. These are the 21 inch options that come in the black optic package. As you can see, you've got this nice multi-spoke design with the black accents running throughout. And I think these look really good with the overall design. Carrying on to our mirrors, we do have the LED turn signal indicator. They're gonna come with most of the features of standard equipment. So that's gonna be heating, blind spot monitoring and power folding. But if you want auto dimming, you will have to choose at least the premium plus model. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the side design of the 2023 Audi Q7. Now, of course, we're going to have a very sleek design since we do have that fully blacked out black optic model. I'm really a big fan of the way this looks with a black on black combination. Now, in terms of the overall length, we're looking at 199.3 inches, which is a good amount for the segment. And as far as some of the styling elements, all of this area down here is going to be blacked out for the black optic package. All the window surrounds are blacked out and our roof rails are blacked out. So that gives you that very stealthy and cool design. Now let's go ahead and work our way around to the rear design. You're gonna have a similar story. Everything's gonna be nice and blacked out and have a very sleek, sexy design. Now, as far as some of the features, we do have a spoiler up top, an exposure wiper right here. Uh, we have our Audi emblem right here. And I also wanna point out that you can uh, black out the Audi beam rings. There's actually a tester on the lot today that had the fully blacked out badging as well, which looks a little bit nicer than the silver badging. Now, as far as the taillights themselves, these are gonna be your premium LED taillights. They're gonna be standard on every single Q7 model, as you would expect. And we do have all the LED accenting. We have dynamic LED turn signals and the piece that connects the two taillights is also gonna be blacked out. And then dropping down to the lower area, we have a pretty aggressive diffuser. Uh, no exposed exhaust outlets on any Q7 though. Uh, however, we do still have kind of some outlining like a fake exhaust. And then here in the center, you'll know that we have the tow hitch installed. You're looking at a 4,400 pound tow rating for the four cylinder model or a 7,700 pound tow rating with the V6. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and talk about the warranty and safety information. Now, you're actually going to have a 2023 update when it comes to your safety information. So Audi is including Ford Emergency Braking with pedestrian detection as well as auto high beams as standard equipment. And what's new for 2023 is that the driver's assistance package equipment is now standard on premium plus trim levels. So that's going to further include your lane keeping assist as well as adaptive cruise control. It's also worth noting that that package is available on the premium trim level, which it previous, previously was not. So that does mean that that base premium model can get adaptive cruise control. 
Now, as far as your warranty information is concerned, we're looking at four year 50,000 miles for your basic and powertrain warranty. That's going to wrap up the exterior design of the Q7. Now, let's go ahead and check out the luxurious cabin before we take it out in a spin. So walking up to the 2023 Q7, you will continue to find a standard smart entry system with the brand's latest key fob. As you can see, nice size, really good materials with metal and piano black on the outside edges. And then to get inside the vehicle, just reach behind the handle and it will open up the door. There is your look inside of the cabin as a whole. We'll go ahead and climb inside and check out all the details. Let's go ahead and start things off by checking out our interior color and material options. So just like with any Audi, you will continue to find a standard real leather seat. That's what we have on today's example. As you can see, nice looking seat, a good design to it, lots of perforation and some stitching details. As far as the color options, of course, you're looking at just the plain black, but you can also get Saiga Beige, Okapi Brown, or Metro Gray. Now, if you choose the luxury package, that's going to give you Valcona leather, and you do have the same color choices for that as well. Now, turning over here to the seat, you do have the 12-way power adjusting seat with 4-way lumbar support. The luxury package would give you 18-way power adjustment as well as power massage. And let's go ahead and check out the interior materials as a whole. So, of course, by and large, it is going to be the same this year, but there are a couple little updates. One of those is going to be the fact that our leather-covered armrest, as well as our center tunnel, is going to be included now on the Premium Plus trim level. So, as you can see, that's what that's going to look like. Leather runs all the way up through there with the nice stitching detail. You continue to find a leather material in the middle there. It is going to be soft touch along the top, and we do have a high-gloss wood going along the side there two-person memory seating, and of course all four windows are fully automatic. Across the upper dash, the leatherette is going to continue for this area as well with the stitching detail. As we drop down, you've got a nice piano black finish that kind of blends in seamlessly with the screen. More of that high gloss wood through there as well as down along here, and you do also have an area of leather along the console like I was already mentioning for your knee to rest against. And in typical Audi fashion, everything is built exceptionally and fits together very well. Now to start up, put your foot on the brake and press the standard button. So starting out here with our gauges, you guys are probably already familiar with this. This is Audi's famous 12.3 inch virtual cockpit system. Um, as you know, it does have a lot of customizability. Honestly, more than pretty much anybody on the market, they haven't really been able to match Audi quite yet, uh, including the ability to make your uh, full map display take up almost the entire thing. Continues to look very crisp and nice. And you do have an availability of a head-up display if you choose the Prestige model. Now, as we pull back to the steering wheel, this is the typical Audi steering wheel. Nice leather wrapping. It is going to be power adjusting across every single version of the Q7, and it will also be heated if you choose the Premium Plus or the Prestige model, and you can access that function in the main display. All right, so let's go ahead and talk interior storage next. So just like in the past, there's not actually a ton of places to stick things. When you lift up the center console, this is going to be the vast majority of the storage you have up here in the front. And as you can tell, this is very shallow. It does have a wireless phone charging pad if you choose the Premium Plus or the Prestige trim level. But obviously, this is not really going to fit very well because there's no, nowhere for it to really go. So you can kind of stick it there, maybe crush it, but it's still going to be hanging out. Now, in terms of your cup holders, of course, those are normal size cup holders. You do have a 12 volt outlet. Those were two USBs inside of there and a little slot to hold your key fob. Now, coming to our shifter, this, of course, is the electronic shifter you've seen on many Audi products for several years. Nice metal uh, shifter that feels good in the hand. Pull back for drive. Bump to the right if you want to activate manual shifting, and you do have paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Press all the way up to go into reverse, and when you do, you will be greeted with this 360-degree camera system if you choose the Premium Plus 
or the Prestige model. As you can see, you do have active trajectory. The camera does also bend with uh, that trajectory, and you can click this button here and go into the full 3D view, which of course is a very useful feature if you're in a tight parking spot. Press the P for park, and then right behind the shifter, you do have your electronic parking brake. Now moving beyond that, the next place we come to is our volume knob. So you continue to have three different audio systems. What we have today is the most common system. That's going to be the 730-watt 19-speaker Bang & Olsen 3D sound system included on the Premium Plus and the Prestige levels as standard equipment. So let's go ahead and give it a sample right now. Yeah, so overall sound quality, just like in all the past years, is excellent. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our screen situation. So this will continue to come with the dual screen setup. The lower screen is going to be 8.6 inches. The top screen is 10.1 inches. And this lower screen is going to be dedicated to a lot of different settings, most importantly to your climate controls. So you will have a standard three-zone climate control on every Q7, unless you get the prestige trim level or you choose the executive package, which is what we have today. When you get that, that's going to get you the additional two zones in the rear, which you can control from up here or do it also in the back. Now, making your adjustments is super simple. You do have a nice haptic feedback, so it feels really very similar to clicking a real button. You also find your standard three-stage heated seats located right there. And then the sea ventilation will also be included with that four zone climate control. Additionally, your home link universal remotes are built in right there. Now heading up to the upper display, it does operate uh, just like a tablet. So you've got your tiles that you can swipe between. You do have a built in navigation system, of course, and we don't have it turned on right now, but it can display Google Earth Maps. Furthermore, you do have uh, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities, both of which are wireless. And this is a pretty um, complicated system. We do have a detailed breakdown on the channel if you want to check that out and learn more. Now rising on up, we do have our auto dimming mirror with a compass built in. And then up here at the very top, we do have a standard panoramic sunroof. As you can see, it is going to be a power sunshade. And this front panel opens up really, really large. I've hardly seen a panoramic sunroof give you this large of a front panel. And then you do also have the wind buffer up there. All right, guys, come on back here and see what you get in the second row area of this Audi Q7. Now, this, of course, is a f luxury three-row vehicle, so the rear area is very important. So let's go ahead and dive into the space figures first. Audi makes it real easy on me. We're looking at 38.8 inches of both leg and headroom. So you're going to have really good headroom figures, really good legroom figures. They do even include little cutouts in the back of the seat backs in case your knees are that long. Definitely, I'm not that tall, but uh, maybe for those of you who really are tall, that's going to definitely benefit you. My feet can also easily slide up underneath the seat. So certainly a lot of space. If you're curious as to how that compares to some of the competition, that's bigger than the uh, all-new Acura MDX, and it's also bigger than the Volvo XC90. Now, I also want to point out you can recline these second row seats as well as slide them forward uh, forward and back in case you want to give more ro uh, room to the third row. Now, here in the center, let's talk about this. We're going to have standard vents on every single Q7 model. If we drop below that, you're also going to notice that we have a very fancy arrangement for our temperature adjustments and all that. That's because we do have the executive package. So that gives us our four-zone climate controls so we can adjust the climate back here independent from the front, and each person back here can do that. So that's a really nice feature to see thrown in. Um, I do also want to point out that we have heated rear seats. That's going to be an option or standard on the Prestige model. 
um, this four zone climate control system would also be standard on the Prestige just for reference. And then down below that we have a 12 volt outlet as well as two USB-C type uh, charging ports. Now for the center area we can fold that down. That's going to give you a nice armrest. You do have cup holders inside although they are very small cup holders so don't be expecting to put your Yeti in there that's for sure. And then Turning over to the door trim, uh, let's go ahead and talk about that. We do have a nicely finished door trim. It's going to be a nice soft touch plastic on the upper part. We do have rear window sunshades. Those are going to be included on executive package models if you're premium plus or standard on the prestige. If we drop below that, we have leatherette going all through the middle, some wood trim, as well as a leather padded armrest with a little pop out uh, cubby there. And then at the very bottom, we do have some door storage. And then I also want to point out your B pillar here. Your B pillar is going to be another area where vents come out. So you have both here in the center and on the B pillar, which is certainly a nice fancy touch. Now let's go ahead and get back there to the third row. As I said uh, just a minute ago, this is a luxury three row. So this is, of course, very important as well. So when you get back here, you press this little lever. That's going to fold the seat down. Then you're also going to have to push this. And then when you push this, that's going to allow the seat to pop out of place, and then a hydraulic system is going to kind of lift it up and out of the area. I would prefer it to be a one-touch mechanism like some of the rivals include, but it's not bad overall, and it does allow you to get into the third row pretty easily. And sitting back into the third row, we have uh, 29 inches of legroom, 36 inches of headroom. As you can see, I'm five foot nine. Uh, for reference, this seat is slid all the way back. And, you know, I don't have much legroom to spare, but you could slide these seats forward and that would give you a little bit more legroom. Um, the thigh support is not going to be great. Uh, it's going to be just okay. Um, this Q7 in general, in terms of the segment, is on the smaller end. Um, it's going to be about the same as Acura MDX, but it's, you know, not like the large largest third row in the segment, that's for sure. Now, as far as some of the amenities you're going to get, you do have a cup holder here on the side. I would have liked for Audi to maybe pad this armrest a little bit, but it's going to be a hard touch um, armrest, and you're also not going to have any vents in the third row of the Q7. I've been preaching about that for the last several years, and they still have not given us third row uh, vents. Now walking up to your tailgate of the Q7, you do have a hands-free Power One as standard equipment on this model. So that's a nice touch to see included on even the base model. Um, in order to open it, you just kick your foot under the bumper. We'll see if it's going to work. We do have the tow hitch installed. Sometimes that makes it a little bit more finicky, but most Audi hands-free tailgates work very well. It's just a little bit finicky if you install the tow hitch. Now as far as the rear area here is concerned. We're going to have 15 cubic feet of cargo capacity behind the third row seats. As a maximum, you're looking at 72 cubic feet. And in that middle configuration with the second row folded, you're looking at a little over 37 cubic feet of cargo capacity. If you're keeping track of some of the rivals, that's going to be nearly identical to the Acura MDX. It's going to be a little bit smaller than Volvo XC90 for reference. Um, but overall, you have a decent amount of space back here. Now, as far as how they finished it, they have finished it very nicely. So we have a nice carpeting along the floor. Up underneath of here, you're not going to really find anything of any use. There's no storage or anything like that. We do have LED lighting on the sides, but you're probably going to be mostly concerned with this right here, and that's the power folding third row. Um, so you can just press these little buttons right here. That's going to fold your third row down electrically. Um, as you can see, one of the headrests automatically fold, but as you can see, you can fold them completely flat like that, and that's going to make for a nice flat loading floor. And then you can also fold the second row 40-20-40 split folding, so you can really maximize your cargo capacity back here as well as your seating volume. Now, as far as your passenger seat is concerned, we do have a highly adjustable passenger seat. You're even going to keep the same four-way power lumbar support, so that's really, really nice uh, to see. And then if we pop open the glove box, how do you make some of the biggest glove boxes out there, which you know makes me very happy because it has to pass our coupon test. Let's try and get another coupon out of here. Let's do something else besides Fazoli's. Let's go to Burger King. Burger King has a $12.99 family bundle. So if you have the family, everyone in the Q7, you can get a family bundle and throw it right in your glove box and it's gonna fit perfectly fine. It's nicely felt lined and LED illuminated as well. And then up top, we do have a sun visor. You're actually going to have a unique sun visor setup. So 
You have your traditional sun visor with a mirror as well as LED lighting. You can also detach it out though, and then that allows you to have a two-part sun visor. So if the sun's really blaring on both sides, you can actually have the two-part sun visor set up, which is nice. Nice. All right, and there's a quick punch of the accelerator and the Audi Q7. This, of course, is the 55 model. I think most people end up choosing this option, which is a little bit more powerful than the base four-cylinder motor, which we will talk about in just a second because there are some changes to that engine. But in terms of this model, you're going to continue to have a 3-liter turbocharged V6 engine going to be paired with a 48 volt mild hybrid system and total system output is going to be 335 horsepower, horsepower. Yeah. I blanked for a second yeah. 369 pound feet of torque yeah yeah so really good uh horsepower figures i mean this thing is pretty darn quick if you press the throttle down Now, of course, they do still offer a base powertrain, so if you're looking for that more affordable price tag, you can go for the four-cylinder option, um, and this is actually an updated uh, thing for 2023, so Audi's actually improving this four-cylinder option to make it more competitive, um, so you're looking at a two-liter turbo four-cylinder, 261 horsepower, uh, 273 pound-feet of torque. That's going to be up 13 horsepower over what it was in 2022, um, so definitely some solid improvements for that this year. Now, as far as the other aspect of the powertrain, that's going to be an eight-speed automatic transmission. And just like with any Audi SUV, you do have standard Quattro all-wheel drive as well. Um, in terms of the transmission performance, as you could probably pick up on so far in this test drive, it's a really nice transmission, really smooth, doesn't jerk you around, no hesitation between shifts or anything like that. And when you put your foot down, it does give you immediate response. Yeah, that's really the thing. I would say most about this V6 setup is that it's just smooth and refined. The engine transmission combination, when you have the acceleration, it's just effortless and very smooth, which is exactly what you want out of a luxury SUV. And if you're curious about the zero to 60 times, we do actually have those figures. Um, so for the uh, V6 model, you're looking at 5.7 seconds. So this is certainly actually a, a quick offering for a three-row luxury SUV. 5.7 seconds is uh, pretty darn quick. Right, and this is not even the S7. Yeah, or SQ7. Q SQ7, which is uh, absolutely bonkers. We have driven that. <laughs> it's <laughs> that crazy. Is, yeah, that is pretty awesome if you have that extra chunk of change for the V8. Um, now, of course, you do also have standard Quattro all-wheel drive. This is an Audi after all, and that does mean that you're going to have one fuel economy for each engine configuration. Um, so for this 55 model, you're looking at 18 city, 23 highway, 20 miles a gallon combined. Um, and then if you go for the four-cylinder, you're going to be sitting at 22 miles a gallon combined. So not a big improvement for going for the four-cylinder, which is honestly what I kind of expected because when you but a smaller engine and a vehicle of this size, you tend to not have a large fuel economy benefit. <laughs> oh yeah, guys, I mean, it really pulls hard. Yes, for sure. And even just in the way it sounds, like it just sounds, you know, like Mason was saying, refined, but also just like powerful, smooth. Yeah. While we're going 55 here, let's get a sound level reading. Lowest reading there is 54 decibels even. So really good uh, sound insulation in the Audi Q7. And I think that uh, leads me in to talk about your ride quality. So this Q7, of course, it's a luxury three row SUV as we've said throughout this review many times. And it just does a really good job with the ride quality. I mean, that's I think one of the Q7's best trait is just I mean, goodness, it's just a lot of a lot of comfort. I mean, this is exactly the type of car that you would take on a family vacation. It soaks up the bump super well, as you saw with the sound level reading. It's super quiet inside the cabin. I have zero complaints when it comes to your ride quality. 
And uh, this does also have an available air suspension, which we don't have on this model. So definitely don't think that that's essential to get no. great ride quality because you're going to get that by default here. Yeah, it is standard on the Prestige model though. So that. All right, and it's time for us to head into our air ball and slam dunk for today. Um, our slam dunk, I think, has to be that powertrain. We just talked about it the entirety of this review, uh, just how smooth and refined it is. It's incredible, guys. Um, certainly a big benefit for going with this Q7 model. Now, on the opposite side, as far as the air ball is concerned, I think the biggest thing is going to be some practicality issues. Um, I mentioned that there's a little bit of limited storage up here in the front, which is kind of a big one, um, and also with the third row is a little bit small. Yeah, for sure. And wrapping us up, let's go ahead and talk about the price for the Q7. So how much is this luxury SUV going to cost you? Um, we're looking at $58,200 for 2023, and that's for the premium with the four cylinders, so the premium 45 in Audi speak. Now, if you go for the premium plus, it's gonna start at 62,900, also with that four cylinder engine. And then for the prestige, you're gonna start at 74,000. Do keep in mind that that does come standard with the V6, it's gonna be 55 only. Now, this particular tester is the pre premium plus uh, 40, or 55, excuse me, um, we do also have a few options like the executive package, the black optic package, the towing package, plus our destination is going to be $74,290 as equipped. And then we do have that one little uh, credit for $1,250 for the headlights being missing on this particular model. Now, as I come to a stop here at this red light, um, one of the things that I want to talk about just kind of to revisit a little bit is that mild hybrid system in case you're wondering what is a mild hybrid system for it is mostly for powering advanced auto start stop system as well as some of the electronics um, so it can do things here with this q7 such as turn the engine off as you come to a stop so yeah. if you're paying attention to my tachometer you have those extra few seconds where it goes ahead and powers off as you're coming to a stop yeah and also, kind of bouncing back to the pricing, I did have one thing I wanted to mention. As far as prices increasing for 2023, you're looking between a two and four thousand dollar increase for the 2023 model year Q7. Now, at the beginning, we asked, "Is this Q7 still a strong choice?" And I think, to conclude here, it certainly is. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us on this in-depth review of the 2023 Audi Q7. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, we would truly appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down below. Also, tap the notification bell because that gives you access to some of our newest content, uh, so you'll be able to stay informed in the entire automotive industry. Now, as far as other things that you can do to help us out, you can follow our TikTok and Instagram where we have other forms of content. And we do also have a merch store that has some pretty attractive merch on there if you want to support the channel that way. We'll also, we'll, we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.